Good day, everyone. I am pleased to present an overview of the updated Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022. This presentation focuses on the first three chapters of the PDP. At the beginning of President Duterte's term, he approved Ambition Natin 2040 through Executive Order No. 5. The vision reflects the Filipino people's long-standing ambition to end poverty in the Philippines and represents our collective aspiration for a matatag maginhawa at panatag na buhay para sa lahat. Ambition Natin 2040 now serves as a guide for medium-term development planning across four political administrations. Guided by this vision, the PDP 2017 to 2022 was formulated to lay down the foundation for more inclusive growth, a high trust and resilient society, and a globally competitive knowledge economy. On chapter one, or the overview, the strategies in the plan have been organized into a strategic framework containing three pillars, malasakit, pagbabago, at patuloy na pagunlad. Earlier in 2018, we achieved our 2022 target of lifting 6 million Filipinos out of poverty or four years ahead of schedule. We were able to achieve this because we enacted game-changing reforms during the first half of the Duterte administration. The strategies under Malasakit are aimed at enhancing the social fabric through efficient governance. We enacted the Philippine Identification System or PhilSys Act which seeks to provide every Filipino with a national ID. This will facilitate financial inclusion and the delivery of social services, crucial for mitigating the impact of COVID-19 and accelerating the vaccine deployment. We also passed the Ease of Doing Business and Efficient Government Service Delivery Act to streamline government processes. Under Pagbabago, we focused on structural reforms to address long-standing issues. For example, we enacted the rice tarification law to bring down rice prices for the benefit of all Filipino consumers, especially the poor, improve the country's food security, and enhance the productivity and competitiveness of rice farmers. We also passed laws to further develop our human capital, such as the Universal Health Care Act, the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act, and the institutionalization of conditional cash transfers to the poor through the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Act. Moreover, the passage of several packages of the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program made our tax system simpler, fairer, and more efficient. This allowed us to achieve one of the highest ever revenue-to-GDP ratio of 16.1% and the lowest ever debt-to-GDP ratio of 39.6%, in 2019. Lastly, Patuloy na Pag-unlad includes programs to encourage innovation, research, and population planning, such as the Philippine Innovation Act, Innovative Startup Act, the Philippine Space Act, and the Balik Scientist Program. To support our progress, the Duterte administration embarked on the Built, Built, Built Infrastructure Program to accelerate our economic growth through increased investment and infrastructure and in the process, creating more and better jobs. We have also enacted reforms to promote peace and security, such as the Bangsamoro Organic Law. On Chapter 2, or the Global and Regional Trends and Prospects. With these achievements, the Philippines was poised to becoming an upper-middle-income country by the end of 2020, if not for the COVID-19 pandemic. However, Early last year, COVID spread across the world and entered our country. Many countries, including the Philippines, imposed lockdowns, quarantines, and restrictions, leading to significant loss of income and job. Given this, we have recalibrated the PDP to better respond and address the health crisis while steering the economy towards social and economic recovery. In Chapter 2, we focus on the various health, environmental, economic, social, political, and technological trends across the globe to inform our strategies locally. First and foremost, we need to carefully monitor the pandemic's evolution here and abroad. Thankfully, vaccines have been deployed in the country and across the world, but we must remain vigilant for new variants. Climate change also remains a primary concern as our country is 
one of the most vulnerable to natural disasters. On global economic trends, after the global contraction in 2020, the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, expects the global economy to bounce back and grow by 6% in 2021. With exceptions to uh, such as China and Vietnam, the majority of the economies across the region, including the Philippines, may only be able to return to pre-pandemic levels in 2022. Moreover, the pandemic has exacerbated social inequalities. For instance, unemployment rates across the world remain elevated, while progress in reducing global poverty may be delayed by around three or four years. The World Bank expects that 88 to 115 million people may be pushed into extreme poverty, with the majority coming from middle-income countries. To address this crisis, governments across the world have injected unprecedented stimulus to arrest the economic hit of lockdown and quarantines. As economies slow down and revenues fall, the IMF expects rising budget deficits and sovereign debt-to-GDP ratios over the medium term. There has also been a broad-based monetary easing bias across central banks as inflation remains stable and countries experience decelerating growth. Amid the global backdrop of economic, social, and political uncertainty, we are seeing opportunities for innovation and growth with the rise of artificial intelligence or AI, automation, and the Internet of Things. These may be fast-tracked to complement the increased demand for contactless digital services amid the new normal. On Chapter 3, or the overlay of economic growth, demographic trends, and physical characteristics, besides the global context, our geospatial and demographic characteristics will determine the direction of our economic growth. These are elaborated in Chapter 3, or the overlay of economic growth, demographic trends, and the physical characteristics. The PDP incorporates the National Spatial Strategy to set the physical development of the country. The three components of the National Spatial Strategy are as follows. First is regional agglomeration, which seeks to decongest the national capital region and direct growth to the regional centers. Second is connectivity, which aims to improve linkages between production areas and market centers and the transport network within and across regions. Third is the reduction of vulnerability. With the increasing intensity of natural disasters over the years, we need to strengthen our disaster mitigation and preparedness. To conclude, while the pandemic has temporarily disrupted our development trajectory, our long-term vision remains the same. For the remaining plan period, We will prioritize the health and resilience of the Filipino people as this is the foundation for achieving the Ambition Natin 2040. The succeeding chapters of the updated PDP detail the strategies under the three main pillars, Malasakit, Pagbabago, at Patuloy na Pagunlad. Part 5 and 6 cover the cross-cutting strategies that support the three pillars while Part 7 is a special chapter focusing on overseas Filipinos. For the next two years and beyond, we invite everyone to work together and deliver our commitments detailed in the PDP. Let us turn this crisis into an opportunity to recover strongly and collectively build a more inclusive society until the Ambition Natin 2040 vision is attained. Maraming salamat.